is Eric at Learn Design with Eric and uh, this morning we're going to do a little project. I'm just going to show you how I put together my own board game and uh, kind of the assembly process for the actual playtest components. Now this is not going to be how they are going to be built when it's completed because when it's completed they're going to be built out of like uh, you know thick cardboard and those kinds of mass producible components but for myself, I, I really like to have really high quality stuff. I like to have really, really beautiful pieces to play with. And so uh, for, for a um, play test piece, it's kind of a, a proof of concept. And so uh, that's, that's what we're gonna, I'm gonna be showing you here is how I actually assembled these pieces so that I could enjoy it myself with my friends and uh, also so we can play test the actual components of the, of, of the board and kind of get a feel for what it's like to play the game and uh, before the mass production phase where uh, most of the pieces will be either made out of wood or plastic and uh, where they'll be you know pre-injection molded with you know with yellow plastic or red plastic or blue plastic or the like um, and a lot of the pieces that I bought I bought on um, a place called Game Crafter uh, where you can basically pick up, you know, all kinds of different components for board games. So um, let me show you a few of those things and also show you how I set up the board. So this morning we are going to build a board game piece for uh, my Glaciera board game. This is Bonner's Ferry. I printed out this piece on a 4x6 mat print. At, uh, at Walmart, actually on their, at the photo center. Uh, these prints are like 50 cents each and the quality is actually quite good. They're pretty durable, which is good for my purposes because we're gonna be putting board game pieces on top of this. And uh, the quality as far as the detail and color is pretty good. And I printed them all at the same time so that they have a very consistent color across the board. All the pieces that I'm um, gonna be putting on here some of the pieces, some of the tiles themselves are different colors, but as you can see here, but uh, they at least match uh, and have similar feel. So that I, I like to do that. I've done this a couple times and have used a Walmart photo, but you could use whatever photo you want. You could print it on your own. I just find that inkjet does not hold up as well. It fades and uh, it's not as detailed as a, as a traditional photo printer and uh, the finish is not as durable either and that's important for me in this case. So this is one of the pieces I'm gonna do. I ordered these uh, laser cut pieces of wood on Amazon, or not Amazon, but on eBay. And uh, there's a guy on there that, you know, prints them and, or cuts them out in whatever size you want. And uh, so I ordered a whole bunch of these. I think I got 30 of them for maybe 20 bucks or something, not too much. Maybe it was 30, whatever, it was It was cheap. So the final board, when it's completely made and uh, in production, it's not gonna be made out of wood. Uh, but I may offer a, depending on how well the Kickstarter goes, we may offer an actual deluxe version of the game that's built just like this, uh, or at least somewhat like this. Probably the bottoms will be covered with felt and not weather stripping. But uh, I'm gonna show you how I put this together for myself for the playtest component and you can see how I put it together. So some things you're gonna need, you're gonna need some X-Acto knives. I always use a, play, a cutting mat because you don't wanna ever cut on uh, obviously a beautiful table like this, uh, but even if you had a cruddy table that you didn't care about, you don't really wanna cut on wood because uh, sometimes the grain will kind of force the blade to go in a direction you don't wanna go. And so a cutting mat is really ideal for that. Uh, so I've used this mat for, I don't know, probably 10 years or more, and it's been really good and it was cheap too. Uh, and then I use this glue, Elmer's glue. It's just really great modeling glue, cleans up easy and all that. So we're going to cut out this, this piece. So what I did was I literally just take this and put it on top of here because these are printed on a photo printer. And even though my artwork is 100% accurate and this laser cut is 100% accurate, this printer does not necessarily print at an exact size. 
And so if you were to look at this like I am right now and line it up, their printer has printed this just a bit bigger than the actual size. So, which wouldn't matter for a photo, but it does matter for my purposes. So I'm gonna actually cut it out like this so that I don't have it going past the edge. So I'm just gonna use my trusty X-Acto knife here and go past the edge there. Try not to move it again like I just did because it's not optimal. And go around. There we go. So now we've got our piece cut out. I'll just get rid of that. So there is our finished piece. And now it's the right size and we can glue it on. And I don't do anything really fancy here. I just uh, put some on here. And then get some out. And then I just use my finger. I don't really want to get it on my play mat, so I've got some napkins here I'm gonna use to smear because I want to be real smooth and consistent with this so that it's not you can use a brush I didn't do that because I don't really care about that this stuff's so easy to clean up it just like wipes off your fingers but I want the glue to go all the way to the edge and I don't want it to be too thick because it'll leave like little bubbles that make the thing not look as good And then you don't want to be touching that with gluey hands now because if you get glue on there then you'll see a kind of a dull spot so you want to make sure you get your fingers totally clean before you start trying to squish it down and I again just push out from the inside edge out to the out to the outside so that you get it squished down but not to uh, So there's our there's our board came piece with the stuff on the top. And then the last thing is going to be and I use a different one here cuz I want to protect this pretty stuff here. The last thing is going to be to cut one of these, cut this out to be the right size. So, I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to just lay it on there and use it as a guide to cut. Although actually I'm going to do it on the edge so I don't damage the, put a hole in the middle of this thing because that doesn't make sense. I should probably go from the middle out because this stuff's kind of rippable. with my blade but it'll work it kind of tears it a little bit I've noticed because it's kind of soft because it is weather stripping but it does work so good to um, put on the back of this piece and also I don't know if you can see that but see that little white edge that's just because it's just a little bit kind of off so I'm gonna to try to the nice thing with this glue is it doesn't dry instantly so you can kind of reposition it until you get it just right and then what I end up doing is one of these sides has got just a little bit too much so I'm just gonna trim it off I'm gonna kind of angle the blade a little bit and trim off that little edge just because I don't want it to get caught because what will happen if it gets caught is it'll peel the edge up and I don't want that. So there's the second edge peeled back. So now we got a piece that looks perfect and uh, 
whatnot. And then the last thing is to put on this weather stripping. And this stuff's kind of stretchy, so you have to be a little careful with it. And it's super, 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 super stick sticky. It's almost stupidly sticky. But that's fine, because it is weather stripping. But just kind of put it on here. And it kind of has almost a grain of its own. So one of the things I noticed was when I cut it to fit, it's like it stretched a bit. So I actually stretched it out to, to fit again on here. And then stretch out this side a little bit too. Because I can always trim off excess. And that stuff dries instantly. So you definitely want to get it in the right spot the first time. So now it's got a little bit sticking out on the edge. So again, I'm going to just trim off that excess. And uh, that is a finished board game piece for playtesting that's in real nice to use. So the, the weather stripping really keeps it on the, on the table. Doesn't want to move around too much. And uh, of course I'd let the uh, stuff on top dry, you know, probably for at least an hour before I tried to play on it. But that is how I build these, uh, these pieces for the playtest. And you know, they're just really super nice to use. So thanks for watching. This is Eric at Learn Design with Eric.